welcome, welcome back to another episode of the Four Quarter Quick Take. I'm here with my co-host, Nicholas Todd. Hey, really, how are you doing today? Doing good, bro. Okay, so today's topic comes from the WNBA and from the Native American community. Shoni Schimmel was recently arrested and held on bond for $28,000. Forty-eight thousand dollars uh, What are your thoughts about this? Fuck, man. That's crazy. Like, oh, man. This is definitely something I did not expect. Was it something that you would expect from Shoni Schimmel? Not at all. Not at all. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, dude, that, like, we were talking about this earlier, how you could be... Somebody who, okay, so let's just give a little bit more backstory about Shoni Schimmel real quick before we get into all that. So Shoni Schimmel is a Native American basketball player from Oregon, and she's really, really good. And so she got picked up in college, I think, for, who did she play uh, with? The Saint, or Louis, Louisville Louis Cardinals. Louis? Yeah, she, so she played uh, Louisville Cardinals, and then they uh, yeah. did an upset against, um, oh, it was a Baylor. Baylor, and then, Baylor, that was when Brittany Griner was playing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She, she went all... And Brittany Griner's face when she didn't make a label, yeah. Over. yeah. And then went to go play UConn, and then they ended up losing to UConn. But after that season, I guess she got picked up by the WNBA as the number one or number eight pick of mm-hmm. the whole WNBA. So it's she was also featured on um, some films. I think it was called Off the Res. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like her documentary about her high school days. Yeah. So she was like one of the prodigies, I guess you could say, of the reservation where. She was the, one of the people, one of the very few people that made it off the res and was able to go pro in basketball. Yeah. And I, it sucks that this happened because, like, I'm still trying to process all this, too. So what, what do you think about it, bro? It's super disheartening, to be honest. Uh, you know, she's, she's not Navajo, but when she had her run in the NBA and the NCAA tournament, there was a lot of Navajos in school. And this, this uh, her her run was like when we were in high school, and there was a lot of people wearing her jerseys that were Navajo. Yeah. And I remember walking around and seeing like people with their jersey on. I was like, oh, that's cool, that's cool. Uh, they they're supporting this Native American player, and it's just sad because uh, we talked about it, how life will come at you fast. She's an NBA, WNBA player. She was an All Star, and like two years out, she's getting arrested for whatever reason. Uh, it says uh, assault and criminal criminal mischief. And you could be on top of the world, and then as a couple years later, you could be at your lowest point in your life, which is common when you read about uh, pro players' careers and how they have mental health issues after they uh, they they retire mm. or they, they they can't compete in their sport anymore. And it's sad because she was one of the shining hopes of the reservation. You know, she was one of the top players. That everybody looked up to, just like Jacoby Ellsbury and Bubba Watson. Yeah, Bubba? yeah, yeah. Uh, these top uh, Native American players who show that even though you come up, come from uh, the reservation or Native American community, you can still compete at a high level in your sport you play. And she was she wasn't just a regular like any like bench player. She was actually really really good, like <laughs> scoring on a Brittany Griner. She was leading the team to the to the finals or to the NCAA finals. And it was, it was, she was one of those players that you enjoyed watching because she did and bet she did uh, play like the reservation style, the running gun style. Yeah, she had like her own flair to it. Yeah, you know, she brought our hometown flair, res ball, into the pros and everything like that. And you saw like really slick moves that she would do behind the back passes mm-hmm. and all crazy type of things. And it was, it was honestly really enjoyable to watch her play. And it was honestly really refreshing to be able to see a Native American play pro as well as in the college league because my mom and my sisters, they, they all looked up to her, you know, like yeah. they were just like, you know, they're like, hey, you know, somebody actually made it in our generation and everything like that. And it's just, I saw this yesterday because she was arrested yesterday morning, which was Monday uh, the 14th. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're not giving out too many details right now because I guess it's still under investigation. Yeah. but. Whether whatever it is, if it's like, if it's self-defense or if she did it herself, you know, that is to be determined right now. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't really feel too comfortable judging her because there's no final verdict of actually what she did yet. It's just like right now, I just feel like how you said disheartened to be able yeah. to be like that. She's she's caught up in this situation, and it's like. 
you would see like it's like seeing like one of your res idols or hometown idols get tossed in jail and it's just like fuck man this sucks it's like i because like at, after after she played in the WNBA, she got an injury and pretty much she was bouncing around team like two more teams after yeah. that but then she just kind of got let go after all that and it's just i don't think she ever really recovered uh well she did suffer a concussion and i, m- I remember reading an article saying that she suffered a concussion and then the next year for the training camp uh, she showed up like out of shape, mm-hmm. so it's like she was injured and then showed up out of shape, and then like those concussions are pretty, pretty uh, mental heavy because in the NFL you hear about CTE and all those players like uh, kind of going crazy and losing their mind during um, CTE trauma, and it could have a plain effect. Uh, like like you said, the like with the criminal case and everything, we don't know if it was self defense. You know, the person could have said something racist and. Or uh, there's some other cases like Aaron Donald, who's an NFL player, where the person, he was at a bar and the person just wanted to fight an NFL player. So that, that dude came up already wanting to start trouble. So yeah. that could have happened to her when she was just in self-defense, mm-hmm. where somebody already wa- was like premeditated where they wanted to start trouble with her and came up to her. But, you know, uh, like we said, life comes at you fast. Uh, you have to be careful who you're around, especially like you're not in WNBA before, but you're still uh, like almost a celebrity. Just sense. just because like how of your history, yeah. You know you you don't you even though Ozzy Osbourne isn't really doing shows that much often, he's still famous. Yeah. You know even though you're not participating in these things, people remember you for what you did in your life. You know you're leaving your legacy behind. You're still a hero to a lot of people. Now, like how you said, it could be you know people bad wrong place wrong time. It could be you know herself losing her mind possibly yeah. you know because of lo- losing all the fame and attraction and all that stuff and just i can understand you know how that must feel on her to be like you know i had everything and i lost everything because of myself and my what i did yeah and sometimes you know even when you have a concussion too you can't train the same anymore mm-hmm. you got to be super super careful because um what's his name uh from athlete x um I forget his name, but his uh, his camera guy that he ended up training has like multiple multiple concussions, and if he were to get like another one, he would be like messed up for life. Yeah. So he w- he tells like the personal trainer Jeff uh, Jeff Cavalier that like you know he has to be careful when he works out, otherwise you know he could get really damaged for life. And it's just like that might be her situation why she showed up out of shape and all mm-hmm. that stuff because she had to be careful and couldn't train as hard as she used to. So. There's a lot of things that come with it, and it's just like, you know, it sucks that that's happened to Shoni, and she's, I hope everything works out good. Yeah. You know, I hope she just didn't, like, lose her ish and just beat the crap out of somebody, you know? <laughs> you know, I, I'm seeing, like, a lot of people on the, re- on the, talking about it, they're like, hey, she went to Skoden, or she went Skoden, <laughs> and all that stuff. So. There's the Navajo memes and Native American community memes is, is honestly funny. And it's like she, I seen one that said, uh, she's probably uh, getting buckets on the on the rec <laughs> in the prison courts or whatever. I was like, damn, <laughs> man, the that's a, courts. I was like, God, you guys, <laughs> I was like, didn't even, didn't even give her like a day. Or I anything. know just, people just are straight out there. It's just like that's how crazy and just like. And that's honestly scary, bro. Like how your own people are just quick they to quick t- turn, turn on you. <laughs> you know, that's just how Navajos and just not Navajos, yeah. but natives in general are. You know, it's just like you can be on top, everyone's praising you, but it kind of seems like everybody low key is hoping that you mess up just so they can point out those flaws and forever remember you that way. And it's yeah. just like that's what sucks is, you know, that like all that happened and just we'll see. What what comes in these next couple of days? You know what comes of the case and all that. So we we talk about it. We're from the reservation, um, and you see a lot of basketball players get this clout and get this uh, high praise, and then after their basketball career is done, they don't really do much in life. Do you think this plays a part in that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just that honestly plays like a major part because mm-hmm. like you would devote all your time to basketball and everything like that. Yeah. 
that we see now with a lot of our our high school teammates you know yeah these guys are like the hardcore you know or even people before us like we we say that a lot of good basketball players on a reservation they go to college for basketball and they last like one or two years and then after that they're back on the res or back back home not really doing too much and then that's i've i've seen a couple of them too turn to mm-hmm. alcoholism and yeah. drugs, drugs and all that it's sad because like they're trying to find their way in life and it's just like you know when they say ball is life you know like they take that to heart you yeah. know because like, that's all they had at the time and when you get older you can't ball like, you gotta get a job start having kids a family and all this mm-hmm. stuff and it's just like you can never make makes me miss the court now bro no but yeah i i I see how that could be especially with how far she got man that's especially with like reservation players they're put on a high pedestal where they're almost given this false hope that they can do it for the rest of their lives but as any like sports person tell you that like the nba the WNBA is really really hard to even make it like the one percent would be one percent and you have to be ultra talented even at like people who uh, who are super tall, like as Native Americans, we have height, but we don't have that like seven foot, eight foot height like you need to be in the NBA. I think I'm more like one of the tallest you'll find. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm a rare breed, yeah. but I'm ha- I'm half, so that's I think that's what <laughs> helps me out get as tall as I am. But still, yeah, it know. just it just sucks that like she was uh, such a hero to the community and and the Native American, she was a shining hope that brought res ball to the WNBA. She played at a high high uh, high pace, like crazy passing, crazy handles, crazy layups, and it was that res, res ball flash. And you, you watch her, you watch her playing in NWA. It's like, oh, that person plays like how I used to play, mm-hmm. or how my mom used to play, or whatever. Like our community plays, and you've seen that in her. And just looks like you see that she she's handling these uh, legal issues now. Yeah, you bet all these people on the TV like, hey, she did that to me at City League. (laughs) I've seen that move. I know how to beat it. Yeah. But, yeah, we're just going to have to see how it goes from all that. And it's just, you know, you know, if you know anybody who was on a high pedestal like that and they Mm -hmm. do lose their way pretty much, you know, take care of them. Yeah. You know, they're they're going through a lot. There's still people, like, even though they're celebrities, she's still a person, and she probably deals with still all the Native American community traumas, like domestic abuse, alcoholism, and all that, in her community, that's uh, same as the Native, uh, Navajo community. So, I just hope she gets the help that she needs. Yeah. Because, like, I can imagine, like, you know, people back at home are telling her, like, oh, you know, you go out and party. It's like, oh, you're just a loser. You just, you yeah. lost out and everything like that. And I was just, like, I can imagine, like, you know, egging her on in the right ways of things that traumatize her. And I guess that's, in a sense, abuse to her and egging on a fight and all that stuff. But I, I don't know. This is all just speculations of what happened. So yeah. we're just going to have to wait and see as far as the investigation and what other information comes out from it all. I remember when she was like on her high uh, on her run, she played a game at at the Phoenix Mercury, and there was so many Navajos there. And I remember like I wasn't at the game, but I was. I remember seeing the Instagram posts, and everybody was there, and everybody was sharing on. Mm-hmm. And she had all the support of all the Native American communities. And yeah, I just hope she gets back on the right track. To be mm-hmm. honest, yeah. So. Everybody go. Everybody battles their demons, and it just sucks that like like you said, you hit you. Hit, you hit a high in the Native American community and you hit a low and everybody's so quick to kick you down when you're at your lowest. Yeah. Just because they want to bring you down to their level yeah. and everything like that. And that's honestly one of the toxic traits about the Native American community. It's just like no one want everyone wants you to do good, but they never want you to do better than them. Yeah. So, you know, let's just pray for Shoni, you know, that she finds her way back in her life again and pray for her family everything like that that's going through all this so yeah so we're there right there thank you for watching click like and subscribe later y'all